Okay, so my mom needs a new PC and since it's the start of new year, let's do a step-by-step -step how to build a budget PC build guide. Okay, so since this is a step-by-step -step guide, if you miss a step, don't worry, we're going to include timestamps for all the parts during the entire build process. So you can refer to them as when you want. Okay, before we get to the entire build process, we're going to go through the parts. So who says a budget of this build has to be boring? Because we have chosen the AMD Ryzen 5 3600, we're going to use the we're going to use the stock cooler, the Rave Stealth. For RAM, we decided to go with our ever favorite, ever useful GSQ Flarex 16 gigs, 3200 MHz DDR16. All of these are going to sit on the MSI A520M Vector Wi-Fi. Which has appeared in one of our previous videos, do check it out. Yep, and we're going to upgrade her storage, like really cool. This is the WD Blue, 500 gigabytes of NVMe SSD. And we're going to give her more space because this is the one terabyte WD RAID for mass storage. And if you're wondering, this is her uh, old drive, so don't worry, all her files are still very active and cloned over here. We're not gonna reuse cause this guy is old. Yep, I don't know. Maybe she wanna play games because we are offered to give her uh, MSI 1660 Super. Ventus XS, I don't know what kind of games you wanna play with this, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> to power all of this, we have the, also our ever favorite 650 watts Seasonic s 12 3 and we're going to put all of this inside Typho Systems MATX case with some of their case fans. And we have a kind of legit copy of Microsoft Office here. Which is from her old set. <laughs> it's Windows 7, so you can imagine guess how old it is. Yeah, I hope to give her Windows 10 one day. <laughs> no, no, no. We are going to activate Win 10. Ah, okay. That's pretty good. Okay, so before you start building, there are some tools which you will need for your PC build. So first thing, we have a regular Philips head screwdriver. Also a mini really hip screwdriver for your SSD. Optional, if you have one uh, box to hold all of your screws because you're gonna have many screws. Manic to magnetize your screwdriver because there are some very, very small screws and you don't wanna lose them, especially if you're gonna fix them onto your motherboard because you will lose them. Uh, also, anti static wheel strap if you have one. If not, it's fine. You can just on and off touch the sides of your case or your power supply just to remove any form of static from your body. Yep, find a nice table to put all your parts on and make sure to not build your PC on a carpet. So let's now carry on with the build. Right, so first off, I'm going to take the motherboard and I'm going to mount a couple of things onto the motherboard before it goes into the case. Things that are going to go onto the motherboard will be the CPU, the GSQ Flare X 16 gigs of RAM, as well as the NVMe SSD right over here from WD. So, first thing I usually would like to do is that pop open the box, get it out of the anti-static bag first. Now I'm going to get a couple of things out of the box. So, very important, IO shield, Wi-Fi antenna, SATA cable, as well as the ever important M.2 screw. How I'm gonna do this is you have the motherboard box itself here. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to place the board here. So you have a nice place that doesn't conduct anything. Nice platform for you to work on. First and foremost, let's do the M.2 first. A520M vector Wi-Fi has a single M.2 slot here. So let's get it open. Let's get that out first. Right, so now that we've gotten the M.2 cover open, you'll notice one thing. We have two standoffs down here. We actually only really need one of them. So our M.2 goes straight up to here, right up to the end of the cover. So this guy here is not really needed. Let's get this one out of the way first. Like so, we'll keep that one side. Probably won't be needing it unless we mount a smaller form factor M.2. The reason you'll notice why I remove that additional standoff here, because if I were to actually leave it here, what's going to happen is that it's going to hit the PCB right over here, which is generally not a very good thing because if it's metal hitting here, yeah, potentially bad things may happen. So for safety purposes, get this out of the way here. So you only have one single M.2. This is the rubber piece, so this is fine. So this is actually there to cushion the M.2 as it sits in. Close it like that. This is your heat shield. If you see this thing, please take it out. And we put the cover. So now we mount the screws back on. Like so. The second one here. 
Like so, if you would remember, the motherboard did come with a bunch of additional screws. These are not really needed in this particular scenario because we're using that particular size of M.2. So we'll keep these screws one side in case you ever have to use the shorter form fact M.2 in the near future if you ever need to replace this M.2. The next thing that's going to go on is the CPU itself, the 3600. Since we are going to use the Rave Stealth itself, these black hooks need to come out because these are used only for certain coolers for the AM4 platform like most notably the Rave Prism as well as some liquid coolers so let's get them out first there is a backplate underneath here but leave the backplate there you're going to need it for the Rave Stealth these screws and these two black pieces keep one side you will need them should you ever need to RMA this motherboard So first off, check the CPU. First, this is the Ryzen 5 3600. Check the pins, make sure you see that all the pins are in order. So once you've done that, this low hook, you gently lift it up. So with the socket, you see one small little triangle around here. And this corresponds to the little triangle that's sitting here. So once you rotate it around, inside the socket. The correct orientation is that the Ryzen 5 3600 and the big Ryzen wording should be facing this orientation. So we'll close the lid. Right, so with that out of the way, let's strap the cooler on. Okay, this is the Rift Stealth cooler itself. There are a couple of ways that I like to do this actually. Now, the normal orientation of the cooler is the AMD wording being orientated this way. So you can see it's mounted sideways like that. I don't really like to put it this way. Some people put it this way, which I don't like because it can potentially block off DDR4 slot itself in certain motherboards. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to rotate this AMD thing here 90 degrees so that we have the thing orientated this way. So instead of having it lying sideways like that, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to rotate it. So you may be wondering, how exactly do you rotate it? Uh, first off, this big collar here can come out. So, so get the big collar out first. These two notches is where the AMD logo here corresponds to. So instead of having it lying this way, we want it to go here. You unscrew this part. Then what you do is you take this and then you move it like so. Then you put the four screws back on. With the orientation corrected, slap this on. So now you notice with the orientation like so, the logo is now pointed upwards. Minor step to do, if you think this is unnecessary, you don't need to do this, but I find that aesthetically this looks better, so might as well. And you don't really need a thermal paste here because the cooler comes with its own pre-applied thermal paste. So you can see these four screws down here. So what I like to do is use, I screw in a diagonal pattern and a cross pattern. So this one here, this one here. So once I get these two sides down first, then I will do like that. And last one, I'll go right over here. So make sure that all four are down. Then you pop in your CPU fan header. So that takes care of that. We'll coil up the cable once it's inside the case, but for now, we'll just leave it like that. Last thing we're going to mount in is the RAM itself. Okay, so since this is an A520, we don't really have to worry about which slot for which RAMs because we only have two. So let's open them up like that. You can see down here, there's only one way it's going to go in. So you can see the notch here corresponds to the RAM itself. So if I were to pop it in the wrong way around, there's no way it's going to go in because yeah, you can see the notch does not correspond to the one on the RAM itself. It's just not going to go in. No matter how you force it. So, right way around is this way. Then we'll pop in the other stick. So, hold like both ends like that. And you're done. Right, so now we've mounted quite a number of the components onto the motherboard itself. There are a couple of ways you can proceed from this point onwards. The first is obviously is to take this one and go inside the case, wire up everything with the graphic card and all that, and fire away. The other way which I can suggest would be you take your GPU, you plug it in here, and you take your power supply and then you power it up to see whether it powers up first. 
before it goes inside the case. This may be a step which you may or may not want to do, but this is one thing that I like to do sometimes because I want to be able to see that everything works before I go through the effort of popping it inside the case. So should you or should you not do this? It's pretty much up to you. So now we have the case down here itself. First off, we're gonna take the panels apart first. First thing to come off will be the tempered glass panel. Okay, the next thing that's gonna come out would be the metal panel here on this side. So to get to work, there it goes. It comes. So finally, we need to get the front panel off first. Right, so here comes the case itself. First thing is that we get all this out first. Here's the packet of screws. So this is where this will come in. Long screws for radiators. We're not gonna use, so we'll keep this one side. These are the screws that you actually want. These are the screws to mount the motherboards, the standoffs and all that. So what I like to do is that I open it up and I pop it in right over here. So to get right onto it, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mount the fans. So what's gonna happen is that there's gonna be one to the back and three to the front. One, two, three, 120 millimeter fans. First off, let me get these cables out of the way. So what you see here is first and foremost, this is the USB 2.0, cause the case in front has USB 2.0 ports. We have the USB 3 header, and this one over here says HD audio. So the USB and the HD audio looks very similar to each other, but what is the difference is that you can clearly see their pin outs are different. The pins is blocked off is different. The USB one, the blocked off pin is right to the end. The HD audio, the blocked off pin is on the second row or the second color, depending on your perspective. This little red one down here is the one for the hard disk activity light. This blue color one here for this particular case is for the reset switch. This is for the power switch. And this is for the power LED. Usually in a lot of cases, the power LED is the only one where the two headers are not put together. They are usually two separate leads like this. Before we mount the fans, let's try to do a little bit of cable management, which in this case means we try to trunk them behind. When we do the cable management, we'll tidy it up properly. But for now, we just pop it into here. So that all the wires that's coming from the top, at least, yeah, is closed nicely to the back. So now we have that out of the way, let's get the fans in. So for these fans like that, you will use these kind of screws, quite a fair bit bigger than motherboard screws. Usually, a good practice when you're mounting fans is that you mount it again in a diagonal cross pattern. So what you do is that you do this. But you do not tighten these two screws first. Why? Because in some cases, you can orientate the fence. You want it a little bit up, you want it a little bit down. At this point down here, you want to be able to decide where you want it to position. So I've decided I want it to be a little bit down. So I'm going to tighten it here. And I'm going to put the other two. So repeat the same process for the three guys in front. So for this particular fan, this is configured as exhaust. So it's going to throw the hot air up to the back. Let's get this lead out of the way here first. Here, we're gonna have a little talk about fan orientation. This is gonna be one of the front fans itself. In this set's case, we're gonna have three fans coming in as intake and one coming out as exhaust. This gives you a scenario of positive air pressure because you have three fans coming in and one going out. So what is the advantage of positive air pressure? You minimize the amount of dust that's gonna go in cause the air pressure in here is always going to be higher than what's in the outside environment itself. Right, so what we've done is the fans are already in. So that is out of the way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my front cover back on. Right, so the front cover is on. Let's get to the fun part, which is we get the motherboard into the case itself. Now we have the case itself all prepped up, ready to go. So first thing, before the motherboard goes in, this IO shield must go in first. Make sure this guy goes in first. Some IO shields will have these little tabs down here. Like this one covers over the Ethernet. This upwards first like that. This one is for one of the USB ports. Move it upwards a bit first. This IO shield goes in. So you know it's in when you can see that all four corners pop right in. And when you give it a little tap like that, it doesn't move. So this is how you know it's in securely in most cases. So as you can see, this is a micro ATX case. 
there will be some bigger MATX motherboards like the P550 Morta they are longer in size than this A520 Vector they will have additional standoffs down here so since this A520 Vector is not so long so we won't be putting in these additional standoffs so for this board you will need six standoffs one two three four five six so these correspond to the six one one two three four five six put it in so it's going to spring out a bit like that that's okay because your io shield is a little bit flexible so it's going to spring out like that so what you want to do is you take your motherboard standoff screws this will differ from case to case do consult your chassis manual a good practice here is that for this guy since you have six screws what you should be doing is that again you do a cross pattern one to this side my first screw is already in here so i'll go diagonally across to the other side so this is why you magnetize the screw you don't want it to like oh and then suddenly the screw drops inside there this is disaster but do not fully tighten these two screws you want it to be able to just hold but you want it to still be able to move like that so this will allow you to be able to get all six screws fully in then you tighten again repeat the same thing make sure the screw is in but do not fully tighten then we go to this side so you can see what i've done is i'm screwing in the cross pattern this way this way this way this way so now i'm going to take care of the two in the middle this is one reason why you want to not tighten the rest of the screw you may need to move the motherboard about a bit so that the last few screws get lined properly see i can move it around such that yes i can finally get this guy in okay so once you see that everybody is in do a visual check first close a couple of things number one do you have anything caught underneath the motherboard itself wires or anything so that's why you've noticed i've shoved all the cables here right to the back first so i don't have to deal with that fact so once you see okay i'm all clear then you proceed to tighten tighten so you can see the motherboard is mounted in already what will be the next step let's get to that so next what we are going to do is we are going to mount the hard disk so for this particular case it's actually easier to mount the hard disk first because the hard disk actually sits here or here so we're going to mount it on the bottom section here power supply will go in later so for this particular case how it mounts in is that it uses four screws mount it like that so again we're going to use the cross pattern here we have the screw in but we do not fully tighten second one so a good thing to do at this point in time is before you tighten this screw you see whether you have enough of a clearance on the other two to be able to pop the four screws in so once you're sure you move it around a bit so once you see all four are snugly in so there next we come to the sata cable itself so i'm going to take the straight cable to the straight cable so the first straight cable goes here sata number one that one goes in so that's hard disk connected to the sata port itself right so now we're going to mount the power supply in you can see right now why i've decided to put the hard disk in first because if i were to put the power supply in with all these cables and all that it's going to be quite a fair bit more difficult to put the hard drive in at this juncture you may be wondering why we've elected to use a standard power supply rather than a modular power supply firstly it's due to cost reasons because it's supposed to be a budget set and secondly we tend to realize that more often than not some you users if we give them a modular power supply with the cables that they don't need at that point in time taken out more often than not by the time when they actually need the extra cables they've lost the cables this is one of the advantage of a standard power supply is that everything is here going to first mount the power supply so since this case has a mesh filter where the air for the power supply comes in so we're going to orientate the intake fan for the power supply here downwards like so this Seasonic S12 3650 comes with its own mounting screws. You can see them right over here. Again, do not fully tighten. You see that the power supply is fully snug in. You tighten all four. So all four screws that you need are in to hold the power supply. For a standard power supply like this, this is the time where you take stock of what cables you need and what cables you do not need. Under the category of cables we do need are as follows. 
a 24 pin the cpu 8 pin in how you identify the cpu 8 pin is that it will always be either one solid piece like that you see there's a marking cpu it usually either is a single 8 pin block or in this case it's a 2 times 4 pin split like that this is the gpu power in the one way you can tell is that the cpu is split 2 times 4. the one for gpus and other pci devices are usually split like this 6 plus 2. in this case since we are going with a 1660 super we are going to need one of these we are going to be needing a sata power in sata power in so the rest of the headers here which we do not need at this point in time a good thing to do yeah you get one of these and then you probably just tie it up like so pop it into here in this case what i've done is i've shoved the remaining unwanted loose cables right here behind the hard drive itself so the first off we're going to put the cable for the hard drive itself so like this one here like so the remaining headers we're just going to put them here because this is in case you want to put a second hard drive or other sata devices put them slightly behind here that takes care of that so this is the part where you trunk the cables that you want now i know from here correspondingly my 24 pin is here so i'm going to trunk the 24 pin to here my cpu power goes to this hole because this is where the cpu power in goes in and my gpu power in so my gpu i know is going to hang about here few ways you can do this but for this case i'm going to pop it here you'll see in a moment why okay, so first off we're going to get 24 pin in first so usually a 24 pin will look like this it will either be one single 24 pin block or more commonly a 20 plus 4. how you orientate this is that this clip is always exactly in the center if you actually put it the other way around first it's going to be really awkward and secondly this clip is going to be really off center so this is how you know you've gotten it wrong so when you got the correct orientation these little notches here are going to fit nicely here the clip sits exactly in the center which will correspond with this little notch you see on the 24 pin connector on the motherboard once it's all lined up you push and you know it will go in when you do this it can't come out you have to actually press this little clip down here to have it to come out this is my two times four pin for the cpu in one way to do this is that you hold them together you make sure that these two pieces they have this little clip this side also has this little clip make sure they come together and it looks like that you will see this these little notches down here put in like that okay it should go in nicely okay so now here comes one of the most complicated parts of the build deal with some of the front panel headers from the front itself so first off we are going to get the usb 3 in first right yeah you can see below the word vector down there this fella right over here Drunk it in like so okay that's one that's the usb 3 header in next we are going to deal with the usb 2.0 so you can see on this motherboard down here, there are two USB 2 headers, one here, one here. So we're going to use the one on the left and we are going to pop it in. Right, so my USB 2 header is in. Now we come to the front panel audio header. Now usually for most motherboards, usually the usb 2 headers are around this particular region down here they're usually around here while the hd audio because audio is usually here they're usually mounted to the back so in this case this one is no exception the hd audio header is right to the back but then again there are exceptions so do take note do consult your motherboard manual so let's get the audio header in first so usb 2 hd audio fun header usb 3 next we take care of the other headers down here itself for this particular motherboard the front panel headers are here again we'll do some more trunking there we go first off let's take care of the hard disk header now there is one part of an arrow that's the positive so the positive usually will correspond to the connector right all the way to the left we probably pull about some slack the power LED, now for this case, the white is negative, the green is positive. Like the hard disk LED, positive goes all the way to the left, while negative goes to the second pin. So I've gotten both the LEDs in, the power as well as the HDD in. Now we're going to come to the other two. It's the power switch. The blue one over here is the reset switch. Now for these two, there is no particular orientation because these are just toggle switches. Doesn't matter which way it goes in. So since the reset switch is the lower of the two, so we shall put the reset switch in first. 
and we shall follow by the power switch as it is once that is out of the way let's tidy this up right so now that that is out of the way now as you can see here for this particular motherboard you have two types of rgb header the one over here you can see jrgb1 so you can see a couple of markings on the motherboard itself which has a white coloration down here that's the 12 volts the other three pins are the three corresponding color itself so this is 12 volts rgb whereas this one over here you can see there's one pin missing this is 5 volts ARGB now the strip that we are going to put in is a 5 volts ARGB so you can tell by a couple of ways number one you can see my header down here has one pin blocked off and secondly you can see on the strip itself there's only three one two three terminals so do not get them mixed up they are different voltages if you were to plug this ARGB to let's say the RGB header you can potentially damage your strip itself so do be very careful please make sure that you know this RGB strip is 5 volts with one pin missing so it corresponds to that connector here with one pin missing so it's very simple you just plug it in like that yeah so when you know it's in it's in let's get to the next part okay a point of note when you are dealing with RGB and ARGB accessories, especially those with your splitters like this, it is always a good idea that when you assemble the set, any unused headers like this with exposed metal pins, if they come with uh, rubber caps, please put them on. But usually what I like to do is that for these things, just to make sure that they do not short anything. So I take black tape, wrap it around like that, close it off, and I take another set of black tape to cover it for this particular one i'll just tuck it in like that this is a good practice do not leave any exposed rgb or rgb header pins because the moment they hit something metal that's it your set is going to short do keep that in mind next we come to the fun part we're going to insert the gpu in itself so we get this little piece out first I just see which one has to come out first. So in this case, I'm just going to get three of them out first. Why? You'll see in a moment. This is the GPU itself. So I'm going to first take out this cover. Like so. So pop it in like that. So go in like that. This extra piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it to close up here. So the logic being is that for this particular motherboard, in this particular case, I'm going to cover the topmost with this cover so that if you want to use this particular slot, all you have to do is just take out this cover. Right, so GPU is in. So right, since this GPU requires a 8-pin power in, again, how to get everything connected in? This clip is going to be exactly in the center if you orientate it properly. So which corresponds to some notch here on the GPU. Yeah, like so. So right, at this point in time, we have the case put together. But as you can see, I've got a lot of cables dangling out. This one is not tied up, that kind of thing. Again, there are a few ways to move from here. Number one is that you do your cable management right here, right now. The other way is that when you have everything hooked up like this, you power it up to see whether everything is working properly, then you do your cable management. So in this guy's case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to power it up to make sure that it works. Okay, sorry to burst your bubble, but we are going to cut here. So there's going to be part 2 of our PC build guide. So in part 2, we're going to show you the power on, how to set up your BIOS, as well as cable manage your PC. If you like our PC build guide so far, make sure to give us a thumbs up. Write down in the comments, what do you think of PC build guide? Is there anything you want us to change? Or are there any other PC build guides you'd like to see in the future? And make sure to come back to our channel to not miss out on part 2 of our step-by-step -step PC build guide.